Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome back to another StarCraft 2 video. Now what I got for you today is a Diamond League match of Zerg versus Protoss that a viewer recently submitted. And apparently it starts off with the Protoss player sending out a probe right at the very beginning of the match. Spotting here in the top left hand corner of the map and playing with the Protoss probes. He's playing with the red colors, he's in Diamond League, and he goes by the name of Chris Judd. Or I guess I'm gonna refer to him as Chris from now on, or maybe the Protoss player, the Dirty Cheeser. Or at the very least, I'm assuming that's the case. And his opponent, spawning in the opposite corner, he's playing with the blue Zerg drones. We are currently looking inside of the main base of Frosty Boy. Frosty Boy, love that nickname. Now, look at that. Chris successfully managed to get this probe in position before the hatchery was oh, do, do, do. There's no way. This is oh no 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 before the hatchery was planted down. Oh my god. Well, hey, nice movement right there by Frosty Boy. He will figure out that indeed there is a probe constructing a pylon right behind his natural already, but it really comes down to his response. The thing is, you can try and attack this pylon, but it could also be a fake, right? For everything you know, for all he knows at this point, it, there might very well be a fake underway. Now, at this point, on the other side of the map, a forge has already finished. So Chris, indeed, will very likely be planting down at least a couple of photon cannons. I mean, he's got three other minerals right now. I would like to see two. Go ahead. Go ahead, Chris. Chris. Chris, go. Chris. Chris, go. Chris. Chris, go ahead. Chris. What are you, Chris, what are you doing? You've got 500 minerals. Why are you not? Chris, what are you doing? Chris is AFK or something? Okay, there we go. Chris finally woke up. I have no idea what he was actually doing. I guess... I guess he was hoping that maybe his opponent didn't see that pylon going up. Maybe something along those lines. But regardless, the cannons are now coming. It's always kind of funny to me when you just want to make that assumption that your opponent is, is like, bad or <laughs> that he doesn't notice what's going on. I'm not entirely sure, but it doesn't really matter. Frosty Boy did end up sending a whole bunch of drones to the low ground. Sure, he successfully managed to kill that, uh, that pylon, but, I mean, the photon cannon still finished. Another pylon was indeed constructed. And that does mean that Frosty Boy is gonna end up losing his natural. Now, a couple overlords right here are also uh, um, morphing in, I guess. I guess they are mostly just here as like a, a, a ritual, like a, a sacrifice to the evil Protoss player to, to maybe, you know, not only just give the hatchery, but also at least one overlord. It's very generous of him. Well, it all depends on the target fire right here, right? Oh, oh, get him. Oh, whoa, oh, no. Man, I'm, I'm mostly just casting in action sounds right now. I guess that's what I'm doing. I'm just shouting at Chris and I'm just making action noises. All kidding aside, though, Chris did manage to uh, get done what he was looking for, right? It did cost him a lot. I'm not even entirely sure if it's really worth it for him. I mean, when you think about it, obviously, not only did he lose a lot of mining time here with that one probe, but he also built two pylons and then a cannon that he cancelled there, and obviously, the cost of the hatchery is really only like 350, but then his, his opponent obviously also ended up uh, attacking... I don't know. I don't really know exactly who's ahead at this point. Now, I do like this response. Is he gonna go Nidus? I mean, he's got double gas. He's making an extra queen right now. I would like to see a Nidus worm. I think Nidus is probably the best all-round response to this. I still play it a lot myself as well, although it is going to be a little bit different with the new patch, obviously, now that, uh, now that uh, Nidus worms are going to be attackable. But regardless, there we go. The Nidus network does indeed come down, and I think what he's planning on doing is sending these units through the worm to the other side of the map. Now, what's really critical with this kind of build is to save up energy on that queen, so you get one transfuse at the very least. So even when you put in the queen first and it pops out first on the other side of the map, when the Nidus is spotted, you can obviously uh, still transfuse it with the queen. Now, well, that's not going to be the case this time around, but Frosty Boy may very well be able to just simply hide it right here in one of the corners of the, or of the Protoss base. Well... The, the, the overlord there was spotted. Obviously, it all depends on whether or not Chris was actually paying attention to the minimap at that point. Well, look at that. Chris playing this really nicely. I mean, he is indeed gonna look around. Well, I mean, no. <laughs> I was just complimenting you, Chris. 
You literally did that perfectly. You are correct. Frosty Boy's build was a little slow, right? There was a little bit of delay before the lair was started and before the Nidus network actually was planted down. Well, it does not matter. The queens pop out on the other side anyways. And even though Chris had all the right intentions, immediately that pylon will be shut down and Chris is not going to be able to finish producing that void ray here for the time being. The, the photon cannon right there inside of the main base, not entirely sure what it was protecting in the first place anyway, did manage to deal quite a little bit of damage, but while that was all going on, the Oracle got a couple kills, and while it's wasting its energy right here attacking one of those extractors, the drones get back to safety, but it's still a lot of lost workers. In the meantime, though, and speaking of lost workers, I think a couple of probes there were killed, but all things considered, it really wasn't that big of a deal whatsoever. I really love the fact, though, that Chris did commit there with the Oracle. I see so many people in Diamond League and below going for an attack like that and then using the Oracle defensively, where its real power, obviously, right there, was indeed killing that mineral line. Now, a single spore will be constructed here. Frosty Boy not really paying attention to his macro anymore. There we go. Finally does start up some additional workers, but... If, if, you know, that Oracle did not just kill so many of those drones, I do think that the Zerg probably would have been in a much better spot. Right now, though, it's a little bit weird, right? Are you really gonna push down? I mean, I guess you can rain Corrosive Biles. Corrosive Bile does outrange a Photon Cannon, so there's definitely some damage that can be done. The Cybercore, uh, well, it's still alive. I actually would like to see that Cybercore go... Well, no, no, but... <laughs> Oh man, that poor Ravager. But I would like to see the Cybercore be targeted down, so there's no more uh, potential for Chris to go for any mid-game tech until he constructs another one of those Cybercores. But regardless, the entirety of the main base here of the Protoss is indeed shut down. So where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? Protoss is happily sitting on a relatively okay economy. He did get himself the Twilight Council. Um, I guess he could go Dark Shrine? I actually think that Dark Shrine is a really clever choice right now. Because Zerk is not really going to have a lot of detection, right? Zerk is actually taking the old main base of the Protoss. Uh, okay. So, that could either be for mining, obviously, or he could use it for larva production, so he can produce a larger army here. Another option for Chris is just to simply go for a lot more units, but that's still a scary amount of Zerk. There's a lot of Transfuser available. You can see that this is still the old patch, so the Queens do still get that instant Transfuse off as well. Solid Micro here, though, by the Zerk. Look at that. Great move there, hitting that Transfuse at the last possible moment. And now that the Zerk has the higher ground, right, of the old main base, I mean, we've seen Star Wars. I've referenced it, it, oh, I've referenced it uh, a thousand times. Uh, at this point, we all know that the Zerk is the one who's in a great position here. Because the Protoss will have a hard time after this, uh, well, I mean, other than that one queen. But after after the uh, revelation runs out, the Zerk is going to have uh, a great time here holding that high ground. Because we've all seen, you know, Anakin. F. You know, to provide your respects. Now, a single drone was brought through the Nidus as well. This is a drone with a duty. A duty to become a pokey boy. <laughs> he needs to try and become a Poke Boy just in case the uh, just in case the evil Stalker men decide to once again move up to watch the high ground. Now the Dark Shrine is coming. I like this third Nexus also coming up here for Chris. Clever decision making here. Zerk did now finish up that main hatchery inside of the main of his opponent, but at this point he doesn't know about the fact that there is a third Nexus. I would love to see some Zerklings making their way from the main. All the way towards the third, because this is the most likely response for our Protoss, right? The Dark Shrine, though, at this point, there's no detection here whatsoever. Frosty Boy did just end up killing his, uh, his opponent, Stargate. Probably much to his own demise, because that is the reason why he's not producing any Spore Crawlers here. If he would have had a Spore Crawler, obviously, the detection here could be quite solid as well. That's still, by the way, a lot of Zealots. He is getting himself charged right now, which I do like a lot, and there's a single Dark Templar coming up. Obviously, the Dark Templar could be used offensively as well, right? Yeah, there it goes. There's a single one of those spores, but I mean, the drones are still gonna go down in plentiful numbers. Chris could just go ahead and target fire down that unit here. 
So while the, uh, while the Dark Templar is going to town at the same time, the Zealots and the Stalkers are once again trying to make their way up towards the high ground. They're being led by a couple of those Dark Templar, and that means all of a sudden Frosty Boy is running for his life. Does he realize the Dark Templar are there? I'm assuming he does. There we go. One of the Dark Templar is now being split off as well to shut down the Night is Warp to prevent the escape from these Zerg units. That does mean that the Zerg units will likely clean up whatever is left over, although another Night is will be constructed here as well. The D T's are still going to town. One Overseer, though, is gonna be able to provide all the damage, or all the vision, rather, than this, that the Zerg player needs at this point. Now, that one DT, right? It's been going to town. It's got 18 kills right now. It's got 18 kills. There are zero drones remaining here for Frosty Boys. These are the units that he's got. I think this is a Zerg player with a dream right now. Even though Protoss may not have that much of an army, all he needs to do is buy a little bit of time. Still, that Zerg army is rather big. That Zerg army is not gonna slow down, although Chris does have that, that next Nexus already ready to go as well. He doesn't really have the army to deal right here with that Zerg army. One of these Ravagers getting corrosive biled by his own brother there as well, and maybe even his own bile too. But while the natural there is now being pushed away, Chris is going to continue mining from the third. I think what Protoss needs to do is just simply warp in a couple times and then try to engage this army. If the Dark Shrine falls though, this could be actually trouble. There's no more mining here. The main base of Frosty Boys will end up dying, but he's got that next hatchery ready to, uh, to go as well. So Revelation will be denied here for another little while. Additional gateways are now coming up. A cyber core also being produced. Chris is only going to be able to really produce a couple zealots right now. And I think he needs to continue warping in. There we go. This is going to be a very close fight. The Nexus dies. Frosty Boys, though, I don't know if he really wants to, like... The thing is, you want to shut down the production, but you want to kind of, like, keep the choke, right? Against charge slots in particular. The choke is very helpful to have. Now, he's still, and I think that's one of the downsides here, he still does not know about that third Nexus. If you knew about the Nexus here, I think that Zerg would probably be pushing forward a little bit more aggressively, because the longer the time goes on, the bigger the army of Chris will become as well. Chris, though, did get supply blocked here. Another uh, pylon will likely find its demise here in just a second. So there we go. Chris is still not going to be able to really warp in very much. A couple of pylons are finally finishing up. You can see that Chris does decide to add on a couple, couple more here. But Frosty Boys is still so busy shutting down units that he really should not be caring about. It does come down to patience though, Chris. You cannot really fight this just yet. These queens, they are not to be, uh, not to be messed with. Well, there we go. And I think that Frosty Boy's heart will likely sink right now. Finding another fully saturated Nexus there. The Queens are also the ones now in front of that army. Corrosive Biles completely whiffed. And I think that means that eventually Chris, even though he cheesed, is still the one who obtains the victory. Clever play there by both players. I really, really enjoyed that one. I hope you did as well. If you have an awesome game that you played yourself recently, uh, please only submit them if they are from the recent patch, of course, from the new multiplayer balance patch. But you can submit them to replays at loco.tv. So that way, maybe I will be casting your game here in the future. But for now, I want to thank you for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile, all right? And I will see you once again in the next one.